Hello, it is my pleasure to present to you our annual State of the District Report. The State of the District Report started last year as a means for sharing with the board and stakeholders the efforts being made to achieve the vision and mission of BISD. Three years ago, I had the honor of being selected as the superintendent of this outstanding district. As with all new superintendents, I entered with the hope of enriching the lives of students, our staff, and the community. My hope and desire has not faded. I feel blessed each and every day to work with amazing people who have a heart for children and a passion to see them succeed. I wanted to share with you some of the work of these amazing educators, address a few misperceptions, and hopefully foster an appreciation for the growth taking place in BISD. Like all elementary teachers, I believe there is nothing better than a good story. Therefore, I'm going to share a little tale about BISD. In 1994, school districts in Texas were introduced to a high-stakes test called TOS. This test was new to every school district and created shifts and ripples in the education system that continue still today. One school district, Brazos Ford ISD, struggled like all school districts did when this test was first implemented. However, by the last year of the test in 2002, Brazos Ford ISD had figured out how to play the testing game and was performing at high levels on this basic skills test. To perform at high levels, a very prescriptive process was put into place that created consistency and alignment across the district. Data analysis was critical, daily lessons correlated with state standards, and development of basic skills was the primary focus. BISD was recognized for their performance with awards and accolades and replication of their efforts throughout the state. I personally remember this because I was an assistant principal at the time in the Richardson ISD. The Brazos Court model was known by all and established a reputation of excellence. Unfortunately, the state decided to change the game in 2003 with the implementation of the tax test. This test was no longer only basic skills. The focus had changed, standards increased, and more students were tested, including special education and English language learners that did not previously count towards accountability on the TOS test. Brazosport ISD struggled to play the new game and the model previously used to create success faded away, including some of the valuable components. Over the years of tax, the district learned to play the game a little bit better at individual campuses and made some gains overall, but they never reached the same level as, as was done in 2002. There was no longer a district-wide initiative that created an aligned and consistent model of success. I joined the Brazos Ford ISD in the 2011-12 school year at the same time the state once again changed the game and raised the accountability standards even higher. The state test was no longer a basic skills test, but was now a test of higher order thinking and application of concepts. Much more rigorous and requiring a different method of teaching and learning in order to be successful. In addition, districts are no longer measured on just how many students passed as they were on TOS and TAX, but instead they are measured on four areas called indexes, making the game of high stakes testing more difficult to successfully play. After the pilot year, Brazosport showed a slight dip on the new, more rigorous test but not as significant of a dip as with the implementation of tax. However, the performance was still not where it was in 2002, leaving some folks scratching their head and wondering why. Like many of the reading passages on the new STAR and end of course exams, this story requires some background knowledge in order to truly understand all of the implied meaning. I believe most, though, will comprehend the main idea 
that the state accountability system has changed and no longer mirrors the days of toss and tax. However, the testing system is not the only thing that has impacted our district. For those who are scratching their heads, answering why may vary from person to person based on their perspective. But I do not believe there is a single staff member that would argue that the changing demographics have made a significant impact on our district. At the onset of TOSS, our district was a more affluent and less diverse than it is today. As our economically disadvantaged population has increased, so have the challenges in meeting the diverse needs of our students. Many people remember a different BISD, but today, many of our students enter our schools hungry, are homeless, and sometimes our students even view their situation as hopeless. Therefore, our schools and district must address more than the academic needs of our students. We must also address the physical, social, emotional, and even the behavioral needs of our kids. Some may perceive this to be an impossible task, I would disagree. Yes, it's a more difficult journey, but one that can be climbed collaboratively. In the story you heard previously, I stated there were valuable components of the Brazosport model that fostered educational research and provided evidence of best practice. Strategies such as an aligned instructional focus, data analysis, ongoing assessments, differentiation, and instructional monitoring were all components used to reach high levels of performance and although they look slightly different today due to new research, the model still ensures a sustained focus on student progress and success. Please be assured that although our demographics have changed and the needs of our students have increased, this does not mean we lower our expectations, quite the opposite. Our students are capable of achieving at high levels and we must challenge them to reach their fullest potential. So you may be asking, how do we do this? Well, we have to better understand our students today, equip our teachers and leaders with new pedagogy, and foster a flexible, engaging learning environment. Luckily, our strategic plan has started us on this pathway to reconnect and align our district with updated approaches of the successful initiatives previously practiced in BISD. In the spring of 2012, we had a group of over 130 different stakeholders, including community members, parents, students, teachers, administrators, and board members design and develop our plan for achieving success and rebuilding a reputation of excellence. These stakeholders determined that our community should determine how we measure ourselves and success should not be solely based on a single measure of high stakes testing. Instead, we should look beyond this single measure and refocus our attention towards engagement, innovation, and the future success of our students. The strategic plan designed by this 130 member team established measures they believed should drive our work in BISD for the next five years. Since the implementation of the strategic plan in 2012, we have focused on fulfilling the mission of the district and reaching the goals and measures of success in the strategic plan. At every board meeting, administrators share with our board members some of the action steps and progress being made towards these measures. I'm not going to try to go back through each of these, but will simply share some highlights and next steps. Teaching and learning is our primary focus in the strategic plan and has established eight measures for us to strive to reach. I am pleased to share we are making outstanding progress towards achieving these measures with a lot of work still left to be done. This year we completed phase two of the curriculum implementation process with all teachers having access to the newly implemented curriculum and 99% of all teachers being trained. Our curriculum and instruction team have provided curriculum work groups each grading period to support teachers with curriculum clarity, depth, and lesson planning. 
Next year, the curriculum will be fully implemented and we will focus on designing an ongoing customization process and an exemplar lesson bank. We have already completed over 52% of our curriculum audit recommendations in only two years, when five years is the standard timeline expected for completion. However, a quality curriculum is only valuable when it is accompanied by quality instruction. In BISD, our instructional expectations have had to adjust swiftly to address the rigor of the state test, but to also align with current research-based practices. Change is always difficult and often met with some hesitation, but I'm thrilled with the progress being made and applaud the can-do attitude of our teachers and principals. 99% of our teachers have been trained on using high yield strategies and the failure rate has dropped in both reading and math this year due to the intervention efforts and the engaging instruction taking place in the classroom. Also, 75% of the time, high yield instructional strategies are evident in our classrooms and the number of teachers with advanced certification in English as a second language has increased by almost 19%. Clearly, a lot to celebrate and demonstrates the great work happening in our classrooms. Technology is quickly becoming a part of the instruction with it being evident 34% of the time either with teaching or learning and increasing every single day. We are also focusing on increasing the enrollment in our CTE courses and have been a leader this year in our state for our plan to create pathways under the new House Bill 5. We have worked closely with the college and have a comprehensive plan for aligning high school courses with a student's college career interest. We already offer multiple certification opportunities and now have the structure in place to expand these areas and better support the workforce needs of our community. I believe HB5 has provided us with a great opportunity in BISD and throughout the state to create a more flexible and interest-based high school program for our students. It is our responsibility now to fully embrace this opportunity. This year, we have also spent a tremendous amount of time creating program evaluations. The academic programs such as Gifted and Talented, CTE, Special Education, Bilingual Education, English as a Second Language, Dyslexia, and Response to Intervention have not had an ongoing evaluation process to measure alignment with state and federal requirements as well as best practices in the area of study for quite some time. Some of the evaluations have been initiated while others are in progress, but each is providing us the opportunity to provide optimal programs for all students. Program evaluations will be done on a consistent basis to ensure continuous improvement, vertical and horizontal alignment, and elimination of gaps. In the area of personnel, we have four measures we are targeting, and although a number of efforts have taken place to support this area of the strategic plan, progress is ongoing and we are continuing to seek new approaches for addressing the needs of our employees and recruiting and retaining the best in BISD. We have really focused on addressing and automating our HR processes for compliance and effectiveness. Through these efforts, we are on the right track with competitive salaries, staffing allocations, and benefits. Not there yet, but on the right track. I value all of our employees, and compensation will continue to be an area I work to creatively address and target through our local budget and through legislative changes. To attract and retain the best for our students, we simply must move beyond market competitive in our salaries. We have also implemented numerous collaborative opportunities with our staff and are collecting feedback, suggestions, and responding to questions in multiple formats. This is an area we are working with K-12 Insight on to determine the most effective methods of two-way communication. 
from blogs to BeConnect to our bi-weekly bulletin, we are working diligently to ensure employees are well informed about the direction of BISD, decisions and engagement opportunities. You may have seen evidence of a number of these efforts, such as with our staff recognitions, incentives, stipends, and increased benefits. Additionally, we have just implemented the new HumanX Ventures initiative to ensure quality candidate selection. For the past three years, we have placed a large emphasis on fostering leadership throughout our district. This year, we have made strong progress with the development of a succession plan and increased training opportunities as a means for growing leaders. 96% of our administrators have been trained on effective communication and coaching, and we have just graduated our second class from the Leadership Development Academy. Lots of work taking place in our HR department to recruit, retain, and equip the best team for BISD students. I do want to take a quick moment to highlight one new initiative we have officially rolled out. We believe that our employees have great experiences and ideas that could result in cost savings opportunities. Therefore, we have launched our Operational Efficiencies Initiative to encourage employees to submit their suggestions, big or small, and reap a financial reward of a one-time stipend of 10% of the annual cost savings when their idea is implemented. Our new Operational Efficiencies Initiative also links us to our next set of measures in funding and finance, which challenges us to implement solutions for operational efficiencies, develop a marketing plan, and provide timely and accurate financial information. We are on a continuous hunt in BISD for new approaches that will sustain or improve effectiveness while also helping us to be more efficient. Our board receives regular updates on our financial efforts, so I won't spend a substantial amount of time in this category. However, I do want to recognize the efforts of our business office and the Financial Transparency Committee for ensuring our financials are clear and accessible to our community. The website and our transparency initiatives have been noticed and replicated by other districts and are blazing a trail for best practices. In addition, our financials are rated with superior achievement year after year for meeting compliance standards and audit requirements. The recognitions and ratings are current successes. However, our team has been future focused by seeking means of increased revenue and sustainable reductions. Our district is second from the top on the number of 313 agreements we have engaged in indicating we are taking full advantage of the industry growth in our area. In addition, we have collected over $200,000 in grants and other contributions this year as alternative revenue. All of these are measures of success we need to be proud of in BISD. I could describe the relationship between finance and facilities as a tug of war of sorts. There are four measures we are trying to achieve under the category of facilities, and each one has the potential for increased efficiencies and reduced cost. However, funding is limited due to state cuts, decreased enrollment, and recapture, making facility improvements, upgrades, and replacements extra challenging. However, thanks to the 2012 bond, we are making some promising headway, especially in the area of safety and security and with general renovations. 94% of the year one and year two initiatives are complete or substantially complete in our 2012 bond. This has been our first year also with the new BISD Police Department, and I just want to acknowledge and applaud Chief Allen, Captain Ramos, and all of our BISD officers for their great work. Implementation has been surprisingly smooth. Our partnerships with local law enforcement has grown, and I receive compliments daily from our principals for the support and involvement of the BISD PD. Now that we have implemented our own team, it will not surprise you when I say we want more. They have added so much value to our campuses and district, making them an asset worth broadening. 
Through increased prevention efforts, we have seen a 48% decline in student altercations, and our safety audit surveys indicate that 90% of the students feel safe at school. I attribute much of this success to our new police department, along with all the efforts at the campuses through defined campus management plans and the implementation of positive behavior and intervention supports, or PBIS. PBIS was implemented three years ago as a prevention initiative and to develop the social, emotional, and behavioral skills of our students. Our district is now presenting throughout the state and even nationally the program we have implemented and the successes we have seen as a result. Each campus has implemented over eight different school-wide efforts to support the needs of students. This is astounding and something to celebrate. In addition to all the safety initiatives, our team has also worked around the clock this year to implement bond initiatives, such as security cameras, access control systems, paging systems, playground improvements, sidewalk repairs, and the list goes on and on. However, many of our facilities are in need of replacement, but I believe our team is doing an exceptional job maintaining clean and operational facilities. We are not where we need to be, and there is plenty of work to be done to address the physical safety, appearance, and maintenance needs of our buildings. One thing that might surprise some is that research has shown that facilities do impact student success and staff morale. Some research makes links to the physical environment, while other studies focus on the arrangement. Well, we have witnessed this firsthand this year with the new state accountability measures. Index 2 measures student progress and measures students from year to year. In our current arrangement, only fourth grade counts in our elementary school accountability. With our elementary schools being small in number, the campus accountability rating is determined by only 40 students in some of our elementary schools. In districts with larger schools or schools structured with more grade levels like K-5 or K-6, more students are included in this index and simply make up a smaller amount of the overall measure. Definitely something we are analyzing as we work with the community members that make up the Long Range Facilities Planning Committee. The work of this committee will establish our next steps related to facilities and hopefully provide a means for addressing our strategic measures in this category. Technology has been discussed some throughout this presentation and leads to all of the categories in some way. However, there are three specific measures we are targeting as a part of the strategic plan. All three of these measures target a single goal that technology must become an integrated part of classrooms, campuses, and the district. We are making outstanding gains in reaching our measures for technology in the area of equipping. By the end of summer, our infrastructure will be robust enough to allow for technology to be utilized in every classroom by every student. 49% of our student population has access to a device at school and this is continuing to grow as we increase our devices, complete our bond initiatives, and broaden our Bring Your Own Device initiative. However, our challenges come in the area of training, and although difficult to admit for us adults, kids today are often more advanced in technology, and we must work to simply narrow the divide. Our students are what is described as digital natives, while we are digital immigrants. TASA recently published an article I collaboratively wrote in which I described the technology divide and value by stating, students today consider the days before computers a nostalgic part of history. And to these digital natives, technology is a valuable learning resource comparable to the encyclopedias and textbooks of yesterday. Technology provides immediate digital access to information, experiences, and communication, creating an urgent need for education to align and to effectively prepare students for this global world. For us to align in BISD and meet the measures of our strategic plan, well, in simple terms, 
we have to train the adults to utilize digital tools for teaching and learning. We have broadened our training for teachers and administrators on basic skills like utilizing the device to more advanced skills such as the SAMR model for evaluating effective use of technology in the classroom. We have designed a delivery model through our campus technology reps and will be increasing our focus on technology integration in the coming year. Category number six and our final area is community relations. We have four measures here and we have accomplished a majority of the strategic action steps outlined in this area. Our new fact sheet is a part of our marketing plan related to promoting the district to potential new families and students. We have placed these flyers with human resources departments at the industries in our area with our realtors, our chambers of commerce, and others to highlight that BISD is the place to be. One initiative we started two years ago was our four BISD kids and teachers. This initiative has really exploded, resulting in numerous partnerships, volunteers, and contributors to our district. We also have implemented three new programs this year to inform and educate our community about BISD, including our parent principal collaborative luncheons, our leadership BISD program, which is now being replicated by other districts, and our Be Informed sessions, with our fourth quarter session taking place on Monday night at the Lake Jackson Civic Center at 530. Our district has also continued to broaden our communication efforts with the use of school messenger and social media, which has quickly become the primary and preferred means of communication. We continue to broaden our website information, and I have even started a community blog to share information about our district and education. In addition to our communication efforts, we also want to invite our stakeholders in to be a part of the work in BISD. Currently, we have 28 topic-specific advisory committees that include teachers, parents, community members, business leaders, students, board members, or all of the above in some cases, working on behalf of BISD. I believe it is obvious that when you look at all the measures, you find that BISD is a highly successful district that is sustaining a reputation of excellence. The story and journey of Brazosport has taught us that excellence is an ongoing process linked to a focus on continuous personal, professional, and organizational improvement. I believe our district is at a tipping point of promise and the work of the BISD team deserves to be recognized, appreciated, and supported. Our strategic di direction is clear. There is nothing hidden, withheld, or secretive because we want everyone to join us on this journey towards achieving our measures of success and then celebrate with us when we exceed them. Thank you again for the opportunity to serve with the amazing educators in BISD.